This video is going to cover the process that I go through in making a wheel thrown pitcher and attaching a pulled handle. I'm starting off with a hunk of clay when I'm centering. It's roughly, I think, three to three and a half pounds. I'm not 100% sure. But for my students, I always encourage that they cone it about three times to get it centered. So you really want to make sure it's centered at the bat before you're opening it up. When you open it up, you want to make sure that you have a nice flat bottom with an interior corner. When you're pulling up on the wall, because it's a pitcher, you want to keep the opening more narrow. So you're making a cylinder where the opening does not get larger. So just kind of keep it tapered inward a little bit as you're throwing. That will help to uh, keep it in control so it doesn't get wide on you. You want to completely thin the cylinder before you start to shape it. So I am keeping the rim just a little thicker when I throw it. Uh, thickening up the rim will give me a little bit more substance and then I just kind of collared it in to give it a little bit more of a kind of a gesture at the rim there. I'm going to have it flared out and then I'm going to give it just a little bit, a slight bit of a belly. Now when I make a pitcher, I do not flip these upside down and trim them. I throw it thin enough that it does not need to be trimmed later on. Now, once I have the form thrown, then I'm going to kind of mark out where I want the actual um, spout part. Now, I'm kind of rotating this so I can see, okay, I have an area that's a little bit higher, and I usually try to put the spout on the slightly higher part. So I'm positioning it with the high part toward me, and then I'm gently squeezing between my thumbs and my fingers and I'm pulling upward a little bit. So the pulling upward is thinning the rim and it's going to give it a nice um, kind of a sharper edge for the liquid to uh, break over the edge of the pot. Um, if it's real rounded it will tend to dribble. So this this edge, the very lip of this um, spout is going to be kind of squared off. It's still blunt. It's, it doesn't come to a fine, fine point. Okay, once I have it thinned and it's looking rather symmetrical, then I am going to make a couple of indentations to kind of form the channel of the spout. And again, I'm looking to make sure that it's looking symmetrical. It's easy to get a spout asymmetrical. So I'm forming some indentations. This will help the channel of the spout. It's going to help channel the liquid as it comes out. And I kind of push out on the, the throat of it there. And then I'll cut this and I'll allow this to get leather hard. You can also see my batter bowl video that I did where I make a spout very sim similar to this. I am giving a slight undercut there, and again, I'm not going to be flipping this and trimming it when it's leather hard. I'm just going to tidy up the bottom with a rib when it's leather hard. And I'll put that to the side. Okay, so now I have the, the pitchers in the leather hard state, and I've made a coil and then I've kind of flattened it by smacking it on the table. So notice that the coil is tapered kind of like a carrot. It's fat at one end. The fat end is the end that's going to attach up near the top and I'm going to attach it up at the rim. I kind of want it to kind of flow nicely off the rim. I'm going to score both surfaces, slip one surface and then really press it on there quite firmly. When you are attaching a handle like this and you're doing a pulled handle, you can see there's a little picture there on the right that I've already done. You want to attach the handle, let it sit to kind of like get that joint to uh, just firm up and become a little bit more solid before you start to do the pulling. So usually I would let it sit for you know, probably 15 minutes or so before I actually start the pulling process. So I'm setting that to the side while I work on something else. Now I'm going to start off by pulling this. It's already set up. I kind of put 
put the handle between my thumb and my forefinger and kind of wrap my forefinger around it. I'm dipping my fingers in water. And I'm trying to do this so you can see. So I'm trying to make it kind of sweep upward a little bit. So I'm kind of holding the pot. Now I'm taking my index finger and my thumb and I'm really kind of um, shaping it on the sides as well as squeezing it top to bottom. I, sh I turn my hand and I shape it along the sides, I'm trying to make sure that the sides stay nice and even, it's not lumpy, it's um, going to have a nice consistent pulled shape. You have to use kind of a light touch as you're doing this, and pulling handles does take practice, so don't get discouraged if you try, if you cut it off and try another one. So you can see I've uh, pulled it to the length that I like, now I'm scoring, adding some water, adding some slip, and then I'm just making sure that attachment was good up there. And then I'm going to push this handle onto the scored and slipped area. I am supporting my hand on the interior of it as I do that. And now I'm just going to end up by cleaning this up a little bit. So I'm going to take a paintbrush, cleaning up maybe where I have score marks or tool marks. I want to make sure that that joint looks really really clean just really refining and cleaning that up some okay now this next little bit this is just pulling more handles if you'd like to see a few more so this is a smaller one again between the forefinger and the thumb I sculpt it a little bit on the sides as I do it to make sure that it looks you know consistent and even and not lumpy And then I, ju I just shorten that a little bit. Scoring and slipping, attaching, and then cleaning it up with a paintbrush. Next one, again, forefinger, thumb, side to side, top and bottom, both. Now this one, I'm getting a little extra crazy long. And I'm like, no, I don't like that. So I'm gonna just try something different. I kind of made a fold, just experiment with that. No, I don't like the fold. But that's more like a two finger to handle. Now I'm gonna take the fold out, I'm gonna add a cut, and then add a little sculpted, kind of a swirly kind of a thing. And then the last one, exact same thing, side to side and top and bottom. The pressure points are going to be your thumb and your forefinger. So depending on which part of your fingers you're going to be, you know, pressing on, you're going to do either the top and the bottom or the sides. So this is a pulled handle. It takes practice, but it's kind of a fun way to have kind of that organic feel. I hope you have found this video helpful and please subscribe for more videos on working in clay.